take a look real quick. This is what the search engine landscape looked like back in 2005. Sorry to have a little cloudy graph there, but it's hard to find a graph <laughs> from 2005. And this is really how it broke up. So Google was about 37%, Yahoo was about 30, MSN, remember them, was about 16%, AOL was still a player at about 10%. Then you had Ask Jeeves, and there was a bunch of other players out there like Dogpile and so forth and so on. And this is what really the landscape, but a com very competitive landscape, and there was different search engines out there for the users. But this is what the search engine landscape looks like now. Ultimately, Google is 95% of the total search market. So when we're talking about search engine optimizations and ultimately search engines, we're talking about Google. You know, it's great to optimize for Ask or AOL or DuckDuckGo, but the reality is at the end of the day, if you're looking to drive traffic, if you're looking to drive revenue, um, if you're looking to build your brand, we're talking about Google. You know, people ask all the time, well, that's kind of a monopoly. A lot of people think so. And uh, Google's actually, there's starting to be hearings around um, the possibility of Google being a monopoly. Europe is definitely pushing hard. Um, those hearings are started, and I wouldn't be surprised in a few years those get going in the U.S. as well. But that's a whole other webinar. What we're really talking about today is search engine optimization. And when you're talking about search engine optimization, you're really talking about focusing on Google. And Google's algorithm really has three core ranking factors. Content, links, and rank brain. Now, content at the end of the day is your keywords. It's your content. Links are the interlinking of your pages and backlinks. Rank brain is Google's machine learning where it's basically looking at sites, trying to learn from those sites and ranking them appropriately. Now, even though those are the three core ranking factors, they all fit in those buckets, you know, that includes everything. So, you know, like I mentioned, keywords would fall under the content bucket. Architecture and HTML would actually fall under links, load times, mobile optimization, interlinking, tags, backlinks, and there's so much more. The list goes on and on and on. There's thousands of things that are taken into account with ranking factors. But at the end of the day, they all fall under those three buckets, content, links, and rank brain, which is Google's machine learning um, as far as how they rank people. And we're gonna just take a little bit of time of what each one ultimately means to you. So let's talk about content. And you can't talk about Google and content without mentioning Google's Panda algorithm, which was released in 2011. And I want to start with a little story, an old personal story. It was uh, October morning, made my cup of coffee, boot up my laptop, open up my Google Analytics, and this is what I see. And this is an actual screenshot from Google Analytics from one of my websites. And pretty much overnight, Panda took away all my search engine traffic. Now, what was the Google Panda, rhythm update, Panda algorithm update, which is still in place and is still continually updated? This was the first time that Google really started combating what we call thin content. And you might actually be still getting these recommendations from SEOs, because I even see it from you know companies that are paying a lot of money. Their SEO, hey, create a ton of content, you know, put it up. And by thin, I don't mean short. I mean, thin is not a lot of value to it. Pick a keyword, write a piece of content around that. Pick a, pick a keyword, write a piece of content around that. Not really thinking about the user experience. Just thinking about keyword density, which, by the way, is a little bit of a myth, um, and word count, and just getting up tons and tons and tons of thin content. And the site in question, which I worked on for years and years and years, had thousands of pages. And I was getting tens of thousands of visitors a day. Um, and it was all unique content, but it was extremely thin content. It was very focused on key, uh, particular keywords, writing content, and just it was a volume game. Quantity over quality by far. And I learned a very valuable lesson that day. Um, as as with my traffic, the revenue disappeared as well. 
um, that when you think about SEO, and it's a little bit cliche nowadays, but it's absolutely true, you don't optimize for Google. You really optimize for people. You know, when I started out in SEO, like I said, back in the late 90s, but then moving into 2006, you could definitely game the system. You know, back in, if you would have asked me in 2008, hey, Dave, I want to rank for this term, I could, with a reasonable amount of mo reasonable amount of certainty, I could give you a time frame when you could rank for number two for a specific term, how many links you need to build, and how much ultimately, how much it would cost. And it wasn't really a question of if you could rank for the term, it was more of a question if you could afford to rank for the term. Well, that's really changed um, as Google's changed. Google, just like all of us, the longer you do a job, the better you get at it. So, you know, from almost being very focused on the algorithm, learning the rules, learning how to work with those rules, now it's really more of finding value. So a big recommendation I make to everybody nowadays is you really shouldn't be optimizing for Google. You should be optimizing for the audience that you want to be attracting to your site. If you do a good job of that, likelihood you're going to do good with the rankings. Now, of course, is there still technical things there? Absolutely. But when we're talking about content, you really should be thinking about your audience. Not if I should use that keyword six times, not if I should have 800 words versus 400 words in my copy. You should be really thinking about, hey, is this copy going to be valuable for somebody? So let's talk about the content a little bit. And I already touched upon this a little bit just before. You really do need to think about quality. You know, the pages, they need to be well written. They need to be valuable to the people you're looking to attract. They need to have depth. Now, that doesn't mean the long. It means depth. A piece of content can be extremely valuable and have a lot of value and depth to it at 300, 400, 500 words. And we've all seen it, and we're actually, this is a trend that's starting now in the recipe space. You can have 1,200 word piece of copy that has no depth to it whatsoever, where it's almost like you're reading a, a essay from a seventh grader going, you know, <laughs> very, very, hence, so forth, so on and so forth. So depth does not mean length. It means value to the reader. Another big thing, and this works a lot, and we're big um, advocates over here at LSC Digital, is multiple types of media really do work on a page. And that's user experience as well as Google, because what Google's looking at is that if you have really deep copy, but then you have a video along that copy, maybe you have some audio along with that copy, you're making that piece of copy valuable. Um, you're really building that up as an authority. You're building the depth of that content. So multiple types of media on a page really do help. Do your research. Research keywords that people actually use to find your content and build around those words in your pages. This, I know it sounds so common sense, but you don't, this is probably when I do keyword research and work with clients, this is typically the biggest challenge because they speak very technically and what's technically correct and don't really look at what people are searching. You know, I have a client right now where Google is dying to rank them for a specific term and it's a heavily searched term and Google would love to rank them for this term. Um, and you see it in their rankings. They pop up to six or five and then they pop back, back down to 11 or 12 and they pop back up again. Google is dying to rank this very authoritative site in an industry for a very specific term that's heavily searched. So you can ask yourself, so why aren't you optimizing for that term? Well, you know, to their marketing team, I bring this up. The marketing team is, yeah, that's awesome. But their product team is, well, that's not technically the right term to use. So there's that balancing act right there. Um, now, is there ways to work around that content and find that compromise? Absolutely. But that's something that keyword research really needs to show is there's technically correct and there's what people are actually searching for. And there's a fine balance that has to be um, done there quite a bit. And then also, and we'll touch a little bit more about this um, later in the presentation, but it's really important to keep it fresh. You know, and we're not just talking news items. 
we're talking, even if you're a product site where you're selling blue widgets and blue widgets don't really change, when was the last time you looked at that um, copy? Is that linking to an old manual? Do you have links um, going out to other things that are expired? So really taking the time and keeping that content fresh, looking at that content. And if you have a piece of content that is driving no traffic, nobody visits, and it's completely stagnant, and you look at the copy and there's nothing, retire it. It's not valuable.